everyone, this is Marcy from The Scribbled Word. Welcome to my channel. Today I am going to be showing you how I made these pressed flower tags. And so right now I'm showing you some that I've already made. Um, these were done using Tim Holtz paper and um, some acetate and then some flowers and plants that I had collected this last summer. Um, it's something that my children and I did. My husband made me a flower press, just a really simple one. And so we enjoyed doing that and I wanted to use up some of those flowers that we had pressed over the last year. And hopefully we'll be doing some more of that this summer. I really enjoyed it and I think it's a great addition to your journals and a great way to preserve memories of a certain place. Most of these are just from my yard, but you could certainly pick flowers, you know, on your travels and press them or plants if that's something that's allowed. Um, so I'm just choosing a few flowers from the ones that I've collected. I have a dandelion that my son gave me and um, the daisy that you see and um, some lavender and I, I can't say that I'm wonderful at knowing all the names of, of the various flowers but um, I do enjoy flowers and I would it is something I would like to learn more about I don't really have much of a green thumb but um, I do want to do more gardening in the future and I know my children like to work in the yard so Hopefully we'll be doing more of that this spring. So what I'm doing now is choosing some papers that will coordinate with the flowers that I've chosen. So these papers are from Maggie Holmes. This is um, various Maggie Holmes collection papers. So my previous tags I used the Tim Holtz paper like I said. Um, this time I thought I would make them a little bit different Tim Holtz and Maggie Holmes are probably my two favorite designers when it comes to scrapbook paper and um, crafting items. I really like both of them, even though they are pretty different. Um, Maggie Holmes is definitely more girly and cheery um, and a little more modern, although it has that vintage flair, which I like. Um, so. But anyways, I am, sorry about that, shaking, I bumped my camera. I'm just finishing up with choosing which papers I want to use. And then in a minute, I'll show you how I'm going to make these tags. So once you've chosen your papers, then what I did was I just picked out some journaling cards and tags and things like that that I already had that I thought were around the size of the flowers that I'd chosen. And so here you can see I'm just comparing it to this first flower that I'm going to use the, the yellow basket weave paper with. And I decided on this little camera die cut as being about the right size for the window. So what I'm doing now is I'm just drawing around it to make the window for the flower. So the way that I did it was, as you can see, I just used a hole punch and then I just used my scissors to cut it out. And it works pretty well for me, especially since I'm kind of customizing the size of the window to which flower I'm going to be using. But you could certainly use um, a die if you have um, a die that would work with your flower, or you could use um, an X-Acto knife to cut it out. So, but I like using my scissors and it was something easy and something that I figured everyone would have a pair of scissors. So. <laughs> so here you can see I'm just making sure that this is the right size that I want. I did actually make this window a little bit crooked. I don't know if you noticed that, but that's okay. That's part of having handmade items, <laughs> I think, is that sometimes they're a little crooked. But, um, so here, this is the acetate that I'm going to use as my window, and so I'm going to use that same 
um, journaling card as a template for the size of the acetate that I want to cut. So you can see that I'm just making it slightly bigger than the window and then I do want to cut out two pieces because I'm going to be sandwiching the flower in between the two pieces of acetate. So once I have those cut out, you can see me lay them out here. I'm just removing that paper backing. So now I, what I'm going to do is use this tacky glue and I'm just going to put a, a tiny little dot on the acetate and that's just to keep the flower from slipping and hold, fully hold it in place there on the acetate. So it's going to be pretty secured even without the glue but I just wanted that extra security and hopefully you know I've had them I haven't had any problems with them slipping or moving or changing position so it seemed to work pretty well and then I also just tacked a little bit of glue it to the corners between the two pieces of acetate just to hold it in place for the time being because I am going to actually sew through the paper and the acetate and that's what's going to really secure it all all of it together so I add a little more glue to the top here and then you'll see me place the paper over the acetate. So for this particular one, I did not add anything to the back. I just left the back white, but I ended up using this tag as a pocket in one of my journals, so it really didn't matter that the back of it wasn't lined. So. It really just depends how you're going to use it. If you're going to use it as a tag, you might want to line the back if you don't have double-sided paper. So, but if you're going to use it as a pocket or just glue it into your journal, then it really doesn't matter. So here you can see me sewing around and I just use a zigzag stitch to go all the way around the tag and it worked pretty well. So now what I'm going to do is just to trim this down a little bit so it's more of a usable size to go into my journal. So I'm just leaving a little extra space at the bottom in case I want to add embellishments to it or put um, you know, a little space for writing down there or labeling. So. And then I just rounded the corners there because I think it makes it have a little more of a finished look to it. So now I'm moving on to the next tag. So this is the paper that I've selected for the second tag and I'm going to use this daisy that you see here. So I decided that this little journaling card would work well as a window. So I decided also just that I wanted to have the corners rounded. And then you'll see me position the journaling card on the scrapbook paper. So I kind of fiddle around with it. I decided I wanted it more centered in the middle of this diamond, but I wanted to be able to see those roses at the top. So I kind of just, you know, so this is where I decided it looked good. <laughs> so here I'm just showing you that, um, you know, if you want your tag to have wider edges, then you could use just an awl to punch the hole or instead of the hole punch if your hole punch won't work. So, and then I decide to go ahead and cut down my tag because it is a little difficult to work with the scissors when it's so large. So you can see me doing that and then I'll finish cutting it out here in a minute. So this tag, I actually do end up putting another piece of paper on the other side so that it doesn't just have that white back. So I really should have 
done both of the sides at the same time, but I wasn't really thinking about it at the moment. So you'll see me make this side and then after I cut out the acetate, I'll go ahead and cut out the back side of the tech also. So again, I'm going to add just a little dab of glue to secure the flower onto the acetate. And then I will sandwich the flower between the two pieces, just like I did before. So if you didn't want to sew this in place, then you would want to have more glue that you add to the acetate itself and then you would probably want to have a backing on it for sure if you were just going to use glue. Um, so you can see that I didn't have a back for that one so here I just traced out the tag and then I'm going to go ahead and cut that out so that it will have a back since it is a tag it's going to be something I'm going to be slipping in and out of a journal and so I wanted it to be a little more finished. So, and if you, like I said, if you didn't want to sew your tags and bookmarks, then you would want, probably want to have a backing on it just to make sure that that glue secured it in place and it didn't come apart. So here I'm just trimming off some of the excess white bits around the edges, making sure that's glued down really well. And then I decide that I'm going to put an eyelet at the top of the tag here. So I chose this kind of pinkish colored eyelet and I'm just making sure that I have full centered and then I will secure that here with my crocodile. So see I have those two tags finished. Now when it came to this piece of lavender I didn't have a journaling card that would work with it so I decided to make my own template for a window so you can see I just measured that out and then I'm going to be using this Maggie Holmes paper with the little purple and pink flowers. This one was really pretty. I really liked this one in particular. I thought it worked well with the lavender. So you'll see me cut out one of these bookmarks and then I realize that I want to have both sides with the paper. So um, in just a second I will end up cutting out another one. So if you are going to be using two pieces of paper on either side, it is helpful to do it at the same time, which I eventually realized. <laughs> so now I'm going to be tracing my window onto the paper here in a minute. I'm just trimming off some of these little edges that were sticking out. So since this paper is so busy, I decided to trace it on the back side. And then I just cut it out the same way that I did with the other tags. So this one is more like a bookmark size. And the other thing I did was I used this paper clip and a bobby pin to keep those together as I cut them out so that they would not be slipping around. And then I would have to do it all again and that would not be fun. So this seemed to work pretty well. It really, um, I didn't really have any problems with the papers moving and I was happy with the results. So. So you 
you guys will have to let me know if you enjoy seeing process videos like this. Um, sometimes I feel like I don't know what to talk about <laughs> on parts of them um, since I am kind of just repeating the same process. But it is slightly different and I thought that maybe you would like to see the various ways that you can make you know different sizes and shapes of of these kinds of cards with pressed flowers and um, you can you know I used a flower press like I said that my husband made for me but you can certainly just press the flowers in heavy dictionary or um, sometimes I will just put them in a magazine and then I'll stack books on top of them I've done that before which I'm sure many of you have done that also um, the thing that I would recommend would be to use paper that's a little bit thicker and more absorbent um, I've heard that you can get something called blotting paper which I guess is good for pressing flowers I just used a thicker paper when I did mine and it seemed to work pretty well. Um, you can also add paper towel to around where you have it but you just have to know that sometimes whatever texture is in your paper will transfer to the flower so you might get a, a slightly textured flower but you know if that doesn't bother you then that can work well. So you can see I added an eyelet to the top of this flower also. And so then I'm going to do this last flower. So this will be the last journaling card. And I did something a little bit different with this one, as you'll see here in a minute. So I decided that it would be kind of neat to have one of these little frames that is on the scrapbook paper act as the frame for my flower. So I end up choosing this rectangular frame here at the bottom of the paper. And so you can see I'm just using my awl to punch some holes in there and then cutting it out as I did the others. And I don't end up cutting this paper down at all to make a tag or a bookmark. I just decided to keep it as a whole piece of paper and maybe just add the whole thing into a journal. So that's another idea if you are using pressed flowers. You could just cut out a shape in one of your journaling pages and just have it be like a little window in your journaling page instead of making it a tag or a bookmark or something that you add into your journal. So if you do make your own journals and put them together so it could even be something you could use in a Bible journal, I would think, if you wanted to punch something in the, you know, in the column of the journaling Bible and add a flower. It might be kind of interesting. So, um, but anyways, here I'm, I'm cutting out the acetate again. And then I'm just going to go through the same process that you saw with all of the other journaling cards. So I hope that all of you are doing well. I know that I am happy that spring is here and the warmer weather is on its way. Um, this last month in March we had, we all got that flu that was going around and we were like a little row of dominoes, one after the other getting sick. It felt like we were sick the whole month I don't know it probably wasn't quite that bad but that's how it felt so I'm happy that that's all over with and looking forward to spending more time outdoors I live in Michigan so um, you know it's not it's not really warm quite yet but we have had some really nice sunny days and I've been able to spend some time outside which my children really enjoy um, and I enjoy also so, and we have more camping trips planned for the summer, which we're all really excited about. We have one that we're doing in the spring. So, looking forward to that. So, as you can see, I sewed around this flower here on the frame, and then 
I just left the rest of it intact so that I can maybe use it in one of my journals in the future. And so I was excited how all of these turned out. I, I liked this project. I thought it was really fun and, a, and an interesting different thing to put in your journal or your Bible. Um, I also did this with my kids and they really enjoyed making them. So here I'll show you all of the tags that we made together today. And then you'll see a few examples of how I used some of the other tags that I showed you in the beginning in some of my journals. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and that it was interesting to you. Please leave me a comment if you would like to see more videos like this and don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like. Thanks for watching. Bye.